What is your favorite type of breakfast carb? Pancake, waffles, or crumpets? G'day guys, how's it going? Welcome back to Sam's Home Kitchen where I bring to you budget-friendly recipes with sustainability in mind. So this intro, all that kind of stuff, I've been going by this format for about three, four videos now. I really, really enjoy it because it's like inviting you in my house, us having a chat and kind of just sharing my experience. Hope you enjoy it, hope you are inspired by the things that I put out here. So this week's recipe, we are talking about crumpet. In the past, I've made waffles. One other thing that I really wanna do is English muffins and all of these things kind of all fall in line of some breakfast prep. Whether you're doing it on the weekend to kind of jazz up your brunch game or make crumpets in bulk and then have that ready for the rest of the week. Crumpets, if you not have them before, it's kind of like a thicker kind of pancake with lots of bubbles on top. So when you put butter, when you put any honey or jam on it, they just kind of soak in and it's really 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 delicious but yeah that is exactly what we're going to cook today and no mixer no special equipment needed and I'm also going to show you how to make it without like all those cookie cutter or like stainless steel ring that's what I want to say today before you get into the recipe if you enjoy cooking if you think sustainability really should be more of a widespread idea across uh, your friends and family give the video a like and share it with the people that you care about I would really appreciate it that promotes my video to a wider audience thank you so much for doing that and let's get Get cooking. Okay, so making crumpets is not complicated at all. We're going to need some flour, some dry yeast or instant yeast, some water, some sugar to feed the yeast, and then some salt to season. Five ingredients and that is it. Stop making excuses and just make these beautiful things. We'll put these aside and get cracking. First thing first, we're going to activate our yeast. I've been keeping my yeast in a silicone bag in the freezer to extend the lifespan. Yeast's biggest enemies are water and heat. By shielding these two off, the bag is about one year old and still going really strong. For one portion of crumpet, I'm using three grams of yeast. Be aware to minimize the time yeast is exposed to humidity and just take me back to the straight back into the freezer. In with our yeast, we want to add in about six grams of sugar to give the yeast activation a head start. Now put our sugar and yeast aside for a moment and we want to prep up some warm water. Move the pot of water to the stove and we want to heat up to it's just warm to touch, about 45 to 55 degrees Celsius. What is that in Fahrenheit? Sorry, Fahrenheit what? <laughs> Should only take about 10 to 15 seconds. Once that's done, we come back to our yeast and measure out the water that we need. Crumpet batter is a 150% hydration batter, meaning we need one part flour to 1.5 part water. I'm only making crumpet for myself today, so I'm measuring out 150 grams of water for 100 grams of flour. Give our yeasty sugar water a good stirring until it's all dissolved, once all stirred up. We put it aside to activate while we prep the rest of the ingredients. Grab a mixing bowl and measure out 100 grams of flour per portion. Add in about 2% salt to season, that is 2 grams. Sit and chill out for a bit until our yeast is nice and foamy on top. That is our yeast eating away sugar and fighting out carbon dioxide. Now, our yeast is active and hungry for more. We pour it into our flour and combine it all together. And here we go again, Samlin always be scraping. Grab a spatula and give it a good mixing. It's a very loose batter, which makes it super easy to work with. Mix until there is no more obvious lumps. Get the lumps out of here! Scrape the bowls clean so nothing dries out. Now, we let the batter sit for about 15 to 20 minutes and just let the yeast do its magic. And honestly, in our home kitchens, resting doughs or batters really don't need any plastic wraps. That is unnecessary waste and unless your kitchen is like a burning fireball, they don't really dry out that fast. Give the batter about 20 minutes and then you should be able to see that it's gained some volume and has become quite bubbly. The texture is close to a pancake batter but like fluffier if that makes sense. That is our batter ready to go. Now I'm going to hand make some circular rings since I don't have any cookie cutters at home. So if you got any of these things on the screen at home, feel free to skip this part. I get a strip of aluminium foil. Yes, aluminium. 
fold it in half and just split it into two. I then fold it in half again the long side to get the strip to be about two to three centimeters wide. Now fold it in third to form a triangle, flip the inside out about halfway to make wings, and then rotate the rear end anti-clockwise for about three to five turns. And that is how you make origami swans. <laughs> just kidding. Join the two ends together and fold a little section of the overlapping part together so they don't come undone. And that is our make do crumpet mold. Now, head over to the stove and we want to put on a flat pan on low heat. Drizzle in some neutral oil, some more oil on the finger and we want to coat through our aluminium mold. Once done, put the molds in the pan and we want to add our crumpet batter in the mold about one third to half the height of the mold. So we give room for them to puff up even more. Let the crumpets cook for a good 2-3 to three minutes. If you're using proper metal rings, the heat transferred up from the pan through the rings should cook the crumpets faster. If you're using aluminium foils like me, I would actually suggest to put a lid on the pan and you will see why in a second. So it's been about 3 minutes and it's time to flip. Due to slightly lack of heat transfer through the proper metal mold, you can see the top of the crumpet is still a tad undercooked which made it a little bit hard to unwrap but I got there in the end. When I flip them over, Let's say the bottoms are just a little bit more cooked than I wanted them to be. I would suggest you putting a lid on just to encourage the top of the crumpets to cook faster and help with the consistency. I made the mistake so you don't have to. Flip the crumpets back over just to check that both sides are cooked through and that is a couple of them done. I went ahead and finished the rest of the batter which gave me 4 crumpets in total with 100 grams of flour. Despite being slightly crispier than desired, they aren't too bad at all. Oh, Not terrible for a first attempt and definitely getting those classic crumpet bubbles. The cost rate down is set to below. 3 grams of yeast at $15 a kilo equals to 0.45 cent. 7 grams of sugar and $1.10 a kilo equals to 0.77 cent. 2 grams of salt at 90 cents per kilo equals to 0.18 cent. 100 grams of flour at $1.10 a kilo equals to 11 cents. Altogether, 4 crumpets costed us 16.45 cents to make. One packet of 6 store-bought crumpets are $3.90. Alright, and there we have it. That is our crumpet done right here. I did make 4 but I just couldn't help myself. During the process, I ate one and it was really good. But I'm going to jump right into this and have a taste with butter and honey and let you know how it tastes like. Honestly, this is my first time making crumpet at home and prior to this, my only experience with crumpet are those ones, um, I don't know the brand, like the yellow and red kind of packaging. And those ones are super chewy, but compared to these, these crumpets are a lot softer. And really, even though I burnt, <laughs> excuse my um, rookie error, even though I burnt a bit of the bottom of the crumpet, I really enjoy the crispiness of the crumpet, which you just don't get from the store-bought crumpets. And Next time that I make crumpets, I'll make sure that I cook it in a pan that I can put a lid on. So by the time the bottom is all crispy, the top will also be cooked through with the heat. Anyway, thank you so much for tuning in. I'm sure I will be making more of these in the future. If you enjoyed the recipe, if you learned something, make sure you give it a like and consider subscribing. I have a video coming out on a very regular basis. Thank you so much and I will see you in the next video.